I want to connect the three biggest underground rivers together. Sometimes you go here, you get in a place, you want to keep going, and it just shuts down. And it happens again and again and again. But then at some point, you break through somewhere, and it opens up, the cave keeps going. It's just going to keep going and going, and I'm not going to stop till these caves are connected. The most important thing in cave diving is to control your stress level. Going in there, surging away, your stress level rises, rises, rises. That is something which can happen actually to the best trained divers. You can imagine that, searching away where nobody else had been before, not knowing what we face. Restriction, zero visibility, penetrating a deep, dark cave can become really, really stressful. Um, it was actually here at this place was the scariest moment I had in all my diving career. I was almost certain I'm gonna die. In my head, it was just spinning around. You're gonna die, you're gonna die, you're gonna die. If you do panic during cave diving, that's your certain death. These cave systems here are unique. It's a mecca for archaeology. There's the first humans of the Americas found here in these caves in Tulum. Finding these things, I wondered what to do with them. And I asked my friend, and he put me together with Memo here. I am Guillermo de Anda. Everybody calls me Memo. I am an archaeologist. I've been living in this area for about 33 years now. Robbie is not only a good friend now, but he's the director of exploration in our project. I go in last. So maybe if we go in like in a row like that, Memo, Brian, Jada. Good. And you might trade when you can, Gina. He took us today to a prehistoric man. There is a skull, it looks like it's a human skull. And it's in a very unusual area of the cave. Uh, there's people that live here in the peninsula and don't even know what's down there. We believe it was placed there, either by an animal or by another human. So now, of course, we have more clues, but we have many more questions. Cave diving can be very, very dangerous. You allow your stress level come higher and higher and you still enjoy the dive. 
It is difficult to dive in that place. And it's very, 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 very important to know when it's enough. On that one dive out there, we got to a critical situation. Yeah, this air is not good. To the right, in three to four minutes, we're back by the T. That's the quickest way out. Let's take that one. Right over here. Got it. Got it? Put your what? regulator at the back. Put your regulator in. Okay. You're fine, just breathe out the rig, Gina. I can't get some. Put some regulator in your mouth. Wow, I don't know what's going on. Can't get the gear off. Stop! Stop, stop, stop. It's a whole night of bad about air. You need to breathe off this regulator. Use a rig. Use a rig. Breathe off the regulator. Breathe off the regulator. The air here is not good. Breathe off the regulator. It's choking. Breathe. Breathe. Breathe deep. Breathe deep. Breathe deep. Breathe deep. Breathe deep. Hold on and calm down. Hold on. Breathe from the rig. I'm sorry, guys. Don't apologize. Just breathe. Breathe. When uh, you research caves as an archaeologist, you have to think about caves as the ancient Maya think. For them, a flooded cave was exactly the same as a dry cave. Symbolically, they represented the same. And as an explorer of, of the karst, you need to explore the dry caves as well. There's no way man can do something as magnificent as this. When you see this natural cathedral, this is a natural temple combined with the veneration that the ancient Maya had for these places, that makes them unique. We're entering the heart of the Maya religion. And uh, I think so, oh wow. It's so well preserved. This cave must be, must be protected. These were the most sacred areas of their world. Not a lot of people knew about this cave, even in Maya times. This is a secluded place, this is sacred. Jesus Christ. Oh, this is really something else. There's a symbol there, maybe a snake? I don't think it's a snake. Look at this, how it comes here, and this here. Oh, yeah, well, another kind of snake. Oof, that looks like a monkey. That's the tail, right? See? The legs. And, I and assume it's belly bottom. The belly bottom, yeah. <laughs> and unfortunately, the face is the face is gone. Oh, that's so bad. Find everything. How's this cave um, up until it starts getting tight? There's columns and stuff. I could just come in from the side to the line and then turn that way. Okay. And you follow. Okay. Yeah? There is this one place out there in part of Sakak Twin Cave System where I was exploring and I found a wonderful piece of pottery. It looks very much like a teapot with this snorkel on the side. It was just one of the most amazing artifacts that I've ever seen and found. That's where we go next. Oh, 
It was so frustrating. It hurt, really, literally hurt my heart. We got there, it was smashed. frustrating because it must have been another diver. To see that I have colleagues which care that little about these things like archaeology and awareness, that is really frustrating to be honest. We don't have the right to destroy. We actually have the obligation to protect. It's all the information we know to learn about our past. All this could be changed overnight if we are not aware of the fact that this can be destroyed. And all that information is going to be lost forever. The big goal for all of us is raise the awareness and get these caves protected. But what keeps me going if there's another passage, I want to see where that goes. During my explorations, I found something which took my breath away. And that might change history of exploration here in this area. This cave we entered is a pretty small cave. And then suddenly we get to this gate but when we went through that gate, everything disappeared. No more floor, no more walls. It's insane. 